let me introduce y'all to this YouTube family Showing us the way to get out of debt gradually My man Josh hold it down in the household Christine dominating debt with a chokehold And the kids they are Grace and Zoe Baby Tennessee, new addition to their story Debt kicking Sunday, daily vlogging Dave Ramsey plan gonna have us live large and Every day we'll see part of their lifestyle How they budget and they keep things wrote down See them work through the envelope system No credit cards, only cash going with them You will see how their family strives to survive With the budget plan, help us understand And daily vlogs show us how to have fun When you hear this song, let me hear you say Debt is dumb Debt is dumb, debt is dumb, is dumb Let me hear you say it louder Greetings and citations. <laughs> Hello you guys, happy Deck Kicking Sunday. This has been a week of pure joy. Just what? chaos too, a little bit of that, but just pure joy. We um, are so blessed to have launched our website and it's doing really well and you guys are responding really well. And uh, just to get your feedback and it's just been so much fun. So thank you for that. Okay, so we are here doing Deck Kickin' Sunday, right? That's what we do. That's what, that's what we do. Um, anyway, anyway, I just want to keep talking about the website, but we can't. So you'll see more of the website and business part of it in our vlogs, our daily vlogs. So, okay, first question. Uh, hi, I'm a new subscriber and I have a question. We filed for bankruptcy and that's how we found Dave Ramsey. I'm a student, stay-at-home mom and wife, I get student loans, and we need new kitchen appliances. With my next check, I'm thinking about spending $600 and getting my CNA certificate so I can get back to work, to working, which would bring in twelve dollars to $1,600 a month extra, and, and after three months of working, they'll reimburse me using the, me, after three months of working, they'll reimburse me and using $1,000 out of my loan for the emergency fund. What are your thoughts? And using. Wow. Um, okay. So. Grammar. Like I'm having yeah. a hard time following this one without any periods. Um, I don't really know what you want to use your thousand dollars. Oh, I forgot to mention we still owe six thousand dollars to Snap On Tools for my husband's work. Five thousand dollars for my husband's student loans, and after July, twenty-one thousand for my student loans. Yeah, that's a big so basically, let me boil it down. You want to go back to work, it sounds like. And you then need after to three, go back to work. Three months, they're going to reimburse you a thousand dollars towards your school loan. Is that what I'm reading? Yeah, there's not a period. After three months, they will reimburse me. I'm not sure if they'll reimburse you 100 percent or th okay. Um, well, sounds like you need to go back to work though, because you have a lot of debt that needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, and try and cash <laughs> flow. You know that. Uh, if it's using your thousand dollars to get whatever your license or whatever you need then I, I would use that. If it's going to put you on a, on the fast track to making more money and income to help your family's budget, yes, I would use it. Um, this qualifies as an emergency when you're having a hard time. Making, and you, making bills. But the thing about bankruptcy, you guys have to remember, bankruptcy is fairly easy to file these days. I mean, not easy, but it's easy to say, I'm just going to claim bankruptcy and yeah. go take care of it. The problem with bankruptcy is it doesn't fix your spending habits. It doesn't okay? change your behavior. That's what I'm concerned with. So, uh, as, a thank, as a thank you to yourselves, you never said anything about FPU, so please go take Financial Peace University right now. If you have to take $100 out of your emergency fund to go do it, go invest in, in yourself, in your family's future so that you guys will be sure to never repeat the same problems again. Okay, that was my, my take on it. Um, do new kitchen appliances, how would you save money on new kitchen appliances? I would wait to go back to work, sister, if you could. And unless the kitchen appliances are broke, they're fine. We've wanted yeah. kitchen appliances since the day we moved in here. We and we've been here for seven years and we still have the same appliances. Seven years tomorrow. Because they still work. They work, but our dishwasher is rusty. It has rusted parts on it. So every time we run a load, it's rusty, but that's something... But I've replaced racks and stuff in it, and it sounds like a 747 taken off when it runs. <laughs> it does. But it still works. We're living with it. Okay, because we are... We'll sink fund it eventually, but right now we're not. Okay, and then you obviously have... Yes, go back to work so that you can take care of that all the extra debts that you've got. You all right, wrap it up. Next one. Hi guys, so here's my dilemma. I'm 24 
and around six months ago I bought my very first home with little help from my mom. Since she has no money problems, she keeps telling me that I can pay her back whenever I'm ready, and she also encourages me to keep traveling and wants me to enjoy my youth and not worry about that money. I told her that I want to pay her back as soon as I can, but at the same time I feel I should put money towards my baby step three. In this economy, I feel I should be ready for anything and have a three to six months backup will make me feel a whole lot better. I really don't know which way to go. It eats me inside that I owe money to my mom, but, it, but having no backup just might be worse. I hear you. Do you have kids? Are you married? You're 24. Don't do this. Don't repeat this with your children. When, when and do you do have children? Because it puts them in a really bad position, as you know. You want to be responsible, but you owe mom money. So here's my thought. Treat Just, mom as your debt snowball. I was just going to say, if you're two. paying her back, that's a debt. You shouldn't yeah. be doing your three to six months yet. You need to be doing your debt first. Yes. And then when you're done with your debt, then you do your three to six months. Just because her name's not Chase or Visa or Mortgage, yeah. it, it's still it a debt. It still is listed under your debts. So. so if you're worried about three to six months in the economy, that would be the fire underneath your tushy to get your debt paid off. That's right. Same thing I, I would say. Um, let's see. Okay, you said you make your budget for the year, but you, did you do that in the very beginning or only no. after you became debt free? Um, she's talking about the whole year. Yeah, I know. I know. We have somewhat lived on a budget, but not a specific enough one, and little things are always wrecking it. Yet I don't see how you can project most of the things I'm thinking of that hit us. Um, for example, water heater attachment, pipe breaking, hose. We use to water garden bursting and needing replaced, some kitchen items we use all the time, croaking, etc. While not huge emergencies, not things I would think to pull out of the emergency fund, yet things you can't foresee. Those are the things that just wreck our budget. I hear you, sister. Well, for us, I didn't do a year budget in the beginning, no. but we've done a budget. You but know, when I we think got Gazelle, when we got when Gazelle, we, we, we did. needed to see it. I needed to see our progress. Yes, we would do it like monthly or I'd do like three month budget or whatever. But I did the year budget before we were debt free. I, I knew projected out a year. I knew that because it was just a visual thing. Second, I mean, I understand what you're saying. There's some things around emergency funds. I get that. But what you mean is you need to maybe have a house sinking fund or you need to have a garden sinking fund or whatever where you're putting a little bit of money each month in there. That way, we all know everything's going to croak and crap out. Like right. I know my, I'm not going to get another five years out of my refrigerator, so we're going to start planning for it. There are some things you can plan for. Right. A water heater going out, you know, life expectancy is ten years, so if you're on twelve years on a water heater, it's going to croak out any time. Yeah, so, so there start, are some things you can plan for. Start a home sinking fund where you have an envelope just for your home. We do. If that's your biggest expense, you'll have to sit down, look at your budget, and figure. Okay, what we do every January, you guys, we look back at the previous year of all of the gotchas, okay? And then we make a sinking fund for all of those gotchas. Like school pictures were one. Um, field trip money for the girls were one. Pumpkin um, patch money. The birthday party. Birthday party. Presents were one. The state fair or whatever you go to every year. There's... Yeah. If you sit down and you just... You, the longer you do this, the better you get. I mean, each year right. we do this, we're getting it so tight now. It's, realistically, we've got an envelope for everything, and there's not a whole lot of gotchas. There's not a lot of whole yeah. lot of uh, it's a great way to live. things that catch us off guard. Yes. So. And we still have our thousand dollar emergency yeah. fund because we're working on baby. It's stuff. just practice. Free, but practice, 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 practice. Budget, budget, budget. I love that question. Thank you. Hey guys, just love your show. We love you too. I want to take an FPU class, but I can't find one near me. How do I find the FPU class, or should I buy the home kit from David Ramsey's website? Thank you for the many blessings that you get out of us out here on YouTube. Okay, so great question. FPU, you could find a class that's starting near you. I know I sound like a commercial, but we've said it so many times, and we believe in it, you guys. And we're not getting paid by Dave Ramsey. We just want to clarify. But go to his website, www.daveramsey.com. Um, find a class near you is the button you're looking for. You type in your zip code, it pulls up a whole bunch of FPU classes that are currently going or will be going, and you sign up for one that way. Okay, definitely try the class version over the at-home version, if you can. I mean, take it however you need to take it, because you need to take it, but 
class atmosphere, there's nothing better than that. Well, the thing is, is you have other people going through the same thing that That's you right. are. So when there's discussions and stuff in the class, you're going to hear the same things that you're too scared to talk about. Yes. So there's a lot of that, hey, I'm in the same place as you are, and it just kind of opens discussion and you're able to air things out and work things through. When you're at home, you're just sitting here watching, you're like, yep, fill in the book, yep, yeah, the fill in the book. Is All right, this week's lesson's done, cool. Set that on right. a nightstand. And it might not sink in as much. Yeah. And with... Um, there's some pretty awesome coordinators. I'm I was gonna say, if you had a cool coordinator trying. like us, cool kids here. We we have fun. <laughs> we do games and contests and drawings and little in, uh, visual aids along the way. That we just have a blast with our class. We love it. And there are neat coordinators just like us. I don't want to toot our own horn, but it's something that comes very natural to us. And so you can pick their brains and you can say, hey, what did you do when you struggled? Or gosh, we have handled divorces, um, job loss. Um, people who have lost their investments. We've handled all of the big topics in class and it's been a really good environment for people to be in. So. That and you get a lot, yeah, you do get the accountability. It's nice yeah. to have an accountability partner. Yes, okay. Hey guys, I just wanted to say how amazing you are. Josh, you are hilarious. Oh jeez. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know how to figure out exactly what debt you have. I have a beautiful two-year-old daughter. At the time of her birth, I had no insurance, or I had insurance, and until recently, two years later, they tell me I owe for her whole birth, but it's not on my credit report. My budget for the year has already been made, and I am at the end of my debt snowball, only owing under $1,000, and this was thrown at me. Do I redo my budget, push everything back? How would you handle this? Do well, always trust the insurance company. If it was me, you yeah. need to do a little bit more research in this. And the fact that it took to you, I mean, I understand medical is slow, but right. you need to you need to talk to the insurance, you need to talk to the hospital, you need to, you need to see what's going on there. You and really do. see if you honestly owe it. If you honestly owe it, hit pause. I know you're almost $1,000 away um, on your debt snowball, but maybe pay that off or hit pause or something and settle this debt for a very, very small amount, okay? Because yeah. it is two years. If you do owe it, they're going to be really motivated for you to pay it off. So they'll probably take pennies on the dollar at this rate, okay? Um, but you got to have cash in hand and be ready to pay it when you talk to them. And be willing to roll up your sleeves and fight for the, the charges because if you had insurance and it was a and covered insurance... And you don't owe anything? There's no reason why all of a sudden, just because the plan changed, you know, 18 months after birth, we're going to go back and charge you for right. stuff or whatever. So get everything in a row, yeah. get all your steps lined up, call your insurance company first and speak with them. Don't trust the insurance. Just because you got a bill in the mail doesn't mean you owe it. Exactly. So look into it. Okay. Thank you all for the good advice y'all gave me on the bonus. Okay, this was, this was the lady that was saying... I, my fiance wants to put this bonus money towards a motorcycle or towards mm. the wedding, okay? Yeah. Here's an update. My fiance, fiance and I have come up with a plan for it. We have decided to split the bonus up to where half of it gets put towards the wedding and the other half towards the motorcycle. He also agreed to work as many Saturdays and Sundays to save up as much money as we can to put towards both of them. I am glad that we came to an agreement and worked through it together without fighting about it. I do have one more question to ask y'all. I want my fiance and I to take FPU before we get married. Yes. I have tried to find a class that we both can attend, but with our work schedule being off, him working night shift and I working day shift, it seems to be really hard to find the, t the right time to go. Would taking FPU online be just as good as taking it in person with the other people? I am just worried that it won't be the same. Please help. It's not the same. It's not. It's not. Find one on, on the weekends. Do you guys have days off that are the same? If you do, find one on the weekends that... Um, <sighs> you got to take it together and in a class setting, preferably. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yes, you can get the at-home version or take it online or do whatever you want, but... Congratulations, too, on working it out. That's very yeah. awesome. Okay, I... There's one question. Hey, guys, how do you go about declining outings with friends or family without feeling guilty for saying that you can't go every time? We don't have debt, and we stick to our budget so that we could save, which means that I can go out sometimes, but not every time. We're not broke, but we don't put aside... A lot for individual activities like that. We like to budget more for family fun. I feel like I'm hurting someone's feeling when I say <laughs> I can't do something. 
Well, you're on the right track. Here's, and you here's, come to the right place because we can help you with yeah, that. Yeah, here's, here's the tough love that we gave our friends and family. Yep. We said, hey, this is important to us. We're getting out of debt. We're saving money and we're moving our financial tree forward. This is how we're going to get there. We're going to say no a lot of the time. There's a lot of things we won't go to. There's a lot of Christmas presents you won't get. And there's a lot of birthdays we won't go to because we financially cannot do it. Yep. Love you like a brother, but that's just our plan. And we lost some friends over that. We irritated some family members over that. But we gained a whole awesome but, group of friends out of that experience, which is you guys. But you guys need to do your finances first. You are number one, not You're not, making, doing this for anybody not else. making friends over it. So, I mean, if your friends get hurt because you can't go to every barbecue every night of the week, it's probably okay. You know, they'll have one next week You're that you can survive. go to. You know what I mean? And don't let people pull a guilt trip. Yeah, that's don't. terrible. Seriously, we lost friends, guys. We did. We lost several friends that we thought were good friends because they couldn't handle this way of living that we were But they were, they were the Joneses. They were living on the credit cards. Right. And they were doing this and now they didn't understand the whole cash thing and not having money because they could just open another card and go buy stuff. Right. Well, we were doing the opposite. We were closing another card and paying cash. Yeah. So. And sometimes it doesn't work. And in, in those cases, it didn't work for us. We surrounded ourselves with people who understood what we were trying to accomplish and supported us. And it helped other people around us um, get on this debt plan, getting out of debt plan. And and it sounds like you guys have a budget, which is yeah. great for your outings and whatnot. And basically what it boils down to is you go to the ones you can go to. And then after that, it's just... It's not in the budget until payday. I'll put it in the budget on payday or whatever. And we did the same thing. Like if we want to have a barbecue or something, have friends over, we put it in the budget. And if the money's out, we go a month. Excuse me, we go a month without inviting anyone over because we don't have it in the budget to go buy the extra food. That's right. But we're right. I mean, we could have a party every night of the week we wanted to, but our financial goals and baby steps are way more important than spending all that on food. Yeah. That's it. Wrap it up. And you know what? Five years later, we absolutely made the right choice. Yep. And, and, and now the beautiful thing is, I don't know if it's because we're on YouTube, but people know what we're going to say before us having to say it. And, and still debt-free, working baby step number three, starting a business, we still say that is not in the budget. And, and our it's kids completely even know. okay. Like the kids will mumble something and we'll be like, what did you just say? And they'll be like, well, we were going to ask if we could go do this. And then we just realized it's not in the budget. The kids know. It gets easier, you it guys. It gets easier. It's not always a battle. But just be... Open and honest with the people around you. Best thing. Best advice. So, that's it. Our timer went off on our microwave. Very official. Very professional and official how we do Dead Kicking Sunday. We love you guys, and we will see you next week. Subscribe and leave your comments, questions down below. Thumbs up. And thank you, everybody. My thumbs aren't very long, but thumbs them up. Mine are double jointed. You see that? Can you guys do that? It grosses him out. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I love you, boyfriend.